<laughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, wow, you know, uh, I still get chills when I watch that. I, I don't know how many times I watched it, you know, and uh, man, I, I, I still get emotional. Uh, it really depicts how our program is, what kind of kids we come, I mean, what kind of kids we have, and, and the environment that we come from. You know, we're just like any other uh, society, you know, we, 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 we have a lot of hardship too. And, uh, but to work with these kids, and these kids aren't afraid to work hard. You know, they show up every day at practice. They do everything that I ask. You know, so it's, it's, it, it is really uh, emotional for me. And, uh, you know, right there you saw the 26th uh, consecutive state title. Uh, we won another one after that, 27 consecutive, which is a national high school record for the most consecutive state titles in a row. You know, and that's something that our, our tribe and our high school is really, really proud of. You know, uh, I was just telling the girl back here that uh, I had one of our former runners come up and uh, talk Thursday last week before the state meet. And he said, you know, that is 27 state titles, you know, and I'm, it's older than me. And he, he's 26 years old. He goes, can you imagine that? 27. And, uh, and it's just older than me, you know. And, uh, and I sat there and just thought about it. I said, oh, my God, I'm getting old. And, uh, uh, you know, but again, you know, it's, it's really uh, great for our, for our high school and for our kids and, and you know, for the Hopi Nation. Uh, everybody's uh, behind us, um, on our, you know, on, on our, our cross-country program. And, uh, you know, before I really get going, I think uh, we need to warm up. I told the group this morning, I think we need to go like two, three laps around the, um, out here around the, the mall, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, we... Um, there's, there's a lot of reasons why we run, you know, and, and that is what I'm going to touch up on, you know, just where these kids come from, you know, what, what kind of background they come from, you know, goes back to the uh, 1800s and early uh, 19, even goes further back behind, before that, you know, our ancestors way back were warriors, they were uh, messengers, they were scouts, you know, so they just have that natural endurance, they're born with this natural endurance for distance running. And I think I told the other group that if you put them in a 400-meter track, you know, track field, and if you tell them to break one minute, they, I don't think they can. You know, but if you put them in a long run, they will, they will go forever. They're just like these little billy goats, just choo, 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 you know. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to go in uh, into this uh, little talk of, of where we come from, okay? First of all, we come from the southwest of the United States. Uh, Arizona, northern part of Arizona, and you saw the terrain that we come from. Trails, mesas, dirt, bushes, tumbleweeds, you know, and, uh, but it's great for training for distance runners. You know, a lot of the elite runners now, they're uh, all migrating to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, which is only 90 miles from where we're at, which is at altitude. They're at 7,200 feet, you know, so we're in perfect conditions for um, uh, distance running training. Uh, it starts all back like in the early 1900s. You know, the Hopi runners here, you see them at uh, Old Arabia, at one of our villages. And uh, this is a, a, a starting of a li uh, race. And uh, if you notice, they're all nice and slim. You know, uh, they didn't have burgers back then, pizza, steaks, and all this. They, they were on a, like on a corn diet. You know, so they're nice, slim guys. Uh, no shoes, no running shoes to run. Uh, we don't have the Brook Beast or the Nike Air and... You know, all the running shoes, uh, you know, worried about stability and cushioning. All, this is just barefoot running in the desert. And then their loincloth and then their uh, makeshift shirts. So this is a good picture of, of, uh, of, of running back then. You know, how these uh, traditional races we have. We have traditional races. We have the famous snake dance. We have the women's basket dance. And then we have the flute dance. Again, all for moisture, all for health. You know, and they, they, the young men uh, get, get to run these races. And they run from the bottom of the mesa all the way up to the, to the top, which is anywhere from three to five miles. right? Here. And, and the courses never change. They're, they're still from way back, the same trails. Uh, we run our purpose. Uh, I think Iverson State, best in the film, you know, that uh, I, I run for a purpose. Or we run for a purpose. And one of those purposes is, is for moisture. You know, you saw the dance earlier. Again, that was a rain dance. And everything is connected today on the presentations on Hopi. And it's all about moisture in the form of clouds, 
rain, snow, uh, uh, the Grand Canyon. Have you guys heard of the Grand Canyon in Arizona? This is our emergence. This is where the hope is believed we, we emerge from, up, up to the fourth world. The sun is our father. Uh, we pray to the sun every morning. We pray for our health, our strength. We pray for everybody so that we can get, get through the day. You know, in the morning, that, that's what we pray for. We pray for everybody. We also pray for, for the world so the world is safe. Everybody in the world is safe. Everybody is healthy. Everybody lives a, lives a long life. We run for our cornfields, our staple of life. We also run for our watermelons, our different fruits that we grow. We, we grow, uh, you know, peach, peach trees, peaches, apricots, uh, watermelons. And this guy's my guy. If you can just look at him, and, you know, this is how they live back in the, in the 1800s. Uh, this guy's probably in his um, mid, middle age, you know, somewhere in uh, maybe in his 50s or maybe a little older. And he's out there in the desert. And his uh, attire, he's wearing uh, moccasins, no socks. Uh, he's wearing a uh, loincloth. And he's got his rabbit stick in his right hand. That's what he hunts, hunts with. And on the left side, you see the jackrabbit, which is the delicacy out there. Way back in there, that's pretty much what we could, our meat source was, was the jackrabbit. And can you imagine him chasing this rabbit for probably almost two hours? Jumping over the bushes, cutting around the bushes, trying to just, you know, uh, run the rabbit down. And they're still having the skill to get the jack, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, rabbit stick, and they're still trying to hit the rabbit on the run. You know, so... Uh, this is the kind of elders our, our kids come from. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, who, which one of our runners comes from his, from his family or his bloodline? You know, a natural, natural distance runner just out there in the desert. Another uh, example of life back then, this is a Hopi man carrying his corn from his field. That's probably about, I'm trying to, you know, estimate about 80 pounds, I imagine. Just carrying that from his field all the way up the mesa, you know, up to his house. Again, you've got to have that physical strength, that natural endurance to, to, to carry this load, you know, to, to get it home. And our Hopi farmer, nice and slim, just same attire, out there taking care of his field. And again, like these fields are, you know, three, four, five miles away. They go down every morning, tend to their fields all day, and then, you know, head back home in the, in the evening again. We, take, we run for our gardens. As you see the uh, woman here taking care of her chili gardens. And we run for our kids. So our kids can grow into the next generation. And, and that's a good picture of life way back in the 1800s. You know, two, four, six kids on a, on a donkey there. You know, and so, so we run for our kids, for our families, for our tribe. So, you know, we live a long life. And we run for corn. Corn is our staple of life. Everything we do at Hopi has to do with corn. This here are the six, four colors that we have. The white corn, yellow corn, red corn, and the blue corn. Every one of these corns are used in ceremonies. The ceremonies that we had, the dance you saw today. Okay, that's just an example of one of the social dances. And we have more sacred dances that, that really involve uh, the corn, which we call the cornmeal. We, we, the women grind this corn up into, into small kernels, you know, break the kernels up. And that is what we use for our prayers. Finish line of a traditional race. This is the famous snake dance race. Uh, this is the winner, uh, and the other guys, you know, just finished a little behind him. They're all resting there. Uh, again, this is coming up from a three, four, five-mile race. And like I mentioned, the trails are always the same, never change. The course is the same from way back centuries. And this is one of the, uh, the courses here, sandy, you know, uh, deep sand. And then, you gotta, then once you hit the mesa, the bottom of the mesa, then you got stairs. You know, and they're not even like this. They're, they are just different heights. So you're, you know, you're running full flat and you're, you're tired, but you got to, you got to get up there. You got to finish the race. And it doesn't matter if you come in first or last. 
The whole reason is to run that race and finish and finish strong. These are just some examples of the training that we do. Uh, I took my kids up here, the team, to, to run in these different types of trail, different terrain. Uh, again, just challenging them, physical training, mental training, technical training. You know, so this is just a narrow trail there. And then, uh, you know, running from the bottom. I, I call these punishing, punishing runs. I tell my kids on their Sunday runs, you got to run a punishing run. That means you got to run down the mesa and then just run as hard as you can up, up the mesa. Just punish yourself. Just, you know, make yourself strong. Just challenge yourself. Because Monday we're going to come back with another type of long run. But you need this challenge run. You need this punish run to, to get yourself, you know, uh, to strengthen yourself, especially, you know, physically and then mentally. And then this is the uh, spiritual award. The guy that came up first on this traditional race, he's given a, 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 a spiritual award, a certain uh, type of award for coming up first. And it's his job to take this award down to his own field, plant it, and then pray so that all, everybody's field is abundance when we have harvest. And this is what he receives. A gourd filled with water from one of the sacred springs we have around the villages, a planting stick, and this stick is made out of greasewood. It's one of the hardest uh, 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 stick. You know, when it dries, it's really, really hard to break. And then there's the corn, the seeds. And then on top of that, he gets prayer feathers. Prayer feathers are made by, 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 our, um, by our, um, our, our fathers who go into the kiva and they, they make prayer for us, all the eagle feathers, and then they present that. And this is what's taken down to the field. And the, like I said, the guy that won the race, it's his job to go down and plant this at his own field. And again, this is, this, again, this is uh, uh, a, a little sacred, sacred way of planting. Uh, you know, there's a certain way he plants it. Uh, and again, when he's finished, then he's, he's, he does his prayer. My, my oldest son won a won the um, flute dance race in August. And so he had the privilege of going down to the field. Once he finished the race up top, then he's got to run back down to his field. So we met him down there, and then we went through the, through the process. And uh, it's really humbling. It's really humbling, you know, uh, especially once you say your prayer. And it's, it's all about asking for more moisture and, you know, abundance in your field and the health of our, our families, of our clans, and of our tribe. And just asking for moisture in the form of uh, rain, clouds, snow. The other day, we, when we came in, it snowed. And uh, I think everybody in D.C. area was like, oh, well, oh, it's snowing again. Well, you know. But ho us hopeless, we were just like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, jump. I put on my running gear, and I went to run in it. You know, I ran up to the Capitol, then I ran down the... Um, down the mall and then back over here to our motel. And uh, man, it made me feel good, you know, just, just to feel alive again, that coldness and that moisture, the rain hitting you, you know, man, it felt great. You know, and I said, I'm going to take this back home. I'm going to take this back home with me. So, you know, it's, it's all about that moisture for us in, in, at, at Hopi land. And then another form of traditional award, this is called the uh, plaque, bota. Uh, this one is done with the women's basket dance. They have a race also in the morning. These races are done at, in the morning, early in the morning, right when the sun's going to come up. Right about when it's going to come up from the horizon, boom, they start the race. And that's also traditional. That's also spiritual. You know, uh, it's, we don't use a, a starting gun. You know, it's you. Oh, man, if I could explain it. They, there's, there's certain guys that are appointed to, to, to be starters, and they go like about maybe three, four hundred miles, I mean, uh, feet down, yards, excuse me, and you have to watch them, because then you can't hear them, so you watch him, and he's holding one of these planks up, and that's, that's, a, that's the price for the short distance, and this one here is for all the way up when you take it up to the mesa, so he's, he's, as soon as he's going, so you have to watch him, and we're all lined up, the runners, you know, and as soon as he puts the plank down, that means go, so everybody's just like running, you know, just <laughs> and, the, and the roads are trails only like this big. So you can imagine about, you know, 50, 80, 80 guys, 100 guys just trampling each other to, to get off the starting line. So, um, you know, this is really, um, these runs are, are really sacred to us also. 
And this award here, there's like four of them there. I think four or five, four or five there. And they're valued like around $500 each. So this guy is a rich guy. You know, that's about, what, $2,000 worth of, 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 of plaques. And uh, he's my assistant. He's the guy that was talking in there on the film also. He's, my, he's a former runner of ours, um, you know, and he was, he's really good. He was a six-time state champion. He's a uh, Division I uh, All-American from Northern Arizona University. You know, so, you know, this, this guy was really a really good runner. And then this guy is Luis Tawanima. Uh, this is a guy who started the whole modern type of running for us at Hopi. Uh, 1912 U.S. Olympian, uh, silver medalist in the 10,000 meters, Louis Tuwanima. And he had the record for quite a while, for I don't know how many years. And finally, a Native American broke it, Billy Mills from the Lakota tribe, gold medal. So, you know, we're really, we're really proud of this guy. We worship this guy, you know. And this is his quote, me Run fast, good. All Hopi run fast, good. This is what he said to Pop Warner way back in the, when they were going to school in Carlisle, you know, to have such confidence in himself of being a distance runner. And, you know, I use this uh, quote with my runners. I, I have it printed. I have it in my office. And, you know, just to have the kids believe in themselves that Hopi are good runners, are fast runners. And these are just some of the All-Americans that we have uh, on the Hopi tribe. Uh, two of those guys are my former runners, Juan Novayokva and then Devin Lumayama. Uh, this kind of little brief history of me running in college, you know, just kind of proved that I ran, you know, <laughs> that I was once a runner. And I like to tell people that's like 30 pounds ago, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that, that was my teammate at, uh, at UCO. And then I ran at uh, Haskell Indian Junior College. Uh, that was the Midwest Indoor. That was the mile run uh, indoors. I think we ran 412, me and the guy right there. And then the NAI Indoor Champions, the distant medley. And then this is my, me and my son. You saw him in the film. He was only 13 years old at the time, and he's 17 now. He's a senior. And I was just telling the girl, oh, I feel sorry for this guy. All the things that we go through, and I'm, I'm constantly on him, you know. And, it, and like I tell people, it's really tough coaching your own son. And then also being the son of, a, of, of the coach, you know. And uh, I'm going to buy him a big graduation present, you know, just, just, just the things that we go through, you know. But uh, this is a good picture of me coaching, you know, coaching the kids. Just, <laughs> just there, you know, just there in their face and just challenging them, say, come on, you know. I think you heard that in a film, come on, you know, <laughs> you know, and I was telling her that, you know, uh, some of my kids come back and they tell me they were like in the mall in Phoenix or somewhere and they'll hear somebody whistle, you know, and they'll be like, it's, oh, it's Coach Baker, he's here, you know, or sometimes like I, I'll see them somewhere and I go, you know, and they'll just stop and go, you know, they're, they're so trained, you know, they're so trained that to that whistle that I think sometimes they, they, they just get scared. You know, <laughs> that's like, oh, no, he's Coach Baker here again, you know. But, uh, you know, this is a good picture of, of, of just, uh, my wife likes this picture. You know, say, so you got to put that in your, in your, in your um, speech there. And then this is our 25-year uh, anniversary we had. Uh, our assistant coach put this together at one of the local casinos, and all our alumni showed up, and it was great to see them and just to, to, to visit with them again, you know, and... And like I said, 25 years, that, that, that was a lot, you know, and then you add two more to 27, you know, and um, I never thought I would win a state title. First three years I coached, we were sixth, or we were second, no, we were third, seventh, eighth, and then we finally won our first state title, you know, so, um, you know, I think the story is that, you know, you, you can't give up, you always got to keep, keep going at, you know. And then this is what we uh, say, brothers in arms, because we are our brothers, seven units, Seven units together, fighting for each other, having faith in each other. Uh, I don't know if you saw the other film. Uh, a gentleman was talking about faith in his, in, his, in his field. You know, having that faith that when he plants his corns, his crop is going is, is to grow and flourish and he's going to have a good harvest. And it's the same thing we're running. You know, we got to have faith in each other. The seven of us that are running, that we have to have faith in each other that that. You know, my teammate is going to run his race, and I'm going to run my race, and I'm going to run hard for my teammate. 
you know, having that faith and that trust, that loyalty in, in each other's. You know, I tell my guys, trust in your training. You have to trust in your training. You've had the best training all year. You got to rely on that. So, you know, they're, they're all brothers. They, you know, every team is different, but it's still the same. They're all brothers. Uh, this is our state meet in 217. This is, uh, again, another state title. This was about four or five years ago. And this is another state title team, and uh, we go to Mount Sac to run in one of the big races in California. And we run the sweepstakes, and we uh, pretty much won uh, every race that, we, that we've attended. Uh, my oldest son is on the, on the right side, the profile. Uh, you know, um, he's, he's, he's now 28, but, uh, you know, I coached him too, and he went the same thing with my, with my younger son too. You know, but, you know, he tells me that, you know, he, he learned a lot. He's got to, he lives with me. And then these are Hopi fans. There's, there's so much support we have, a lot of support. We go to state meet. Uh, we just got a whole uh, entourage, you know. There's uh, Hopis that live in the Phoenix area, and they all come just to see their families and watch our kids run. And then just some of the things that, that we still want to uh, accomplish, you know. We, we want to win our 30th, number 30. You know, and we're, 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 three, we're three short right now. And we, we, you know, that is something that, that, that we want to reach as a team. And to continue the tradition of running. And we don't want to forget why we run. Again, it's more than winning state titles, more than winning gold medals. It's, it's running for our health, for our, our strength, for mankind. And that we set a path for the next generation of runners. We got a lot of young kids coming up. And we want to set a positive, positive, you know, uh, environment for them. So when they come to Hopi High, they can be a member of these uh, state, uh, state championship teams that are still come. And that we know the true purpose and spiritual side of running. We really, I really push that on them, the spiritual side of running, you know. And then so that the Hopi way of life will always be in existence. Um, a lot of this stuff I, 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 I talk, you know, with the team. We sit down, have team meetings almost every day. I, I, I sit down and just talk about life, different things in, in life. So, um, you know, that, so they're round-welded people when they leave our program, once they graduate from high school. And some of the life lessons from cross-country, that they will always live a high, li uh, healthy lifestyle. You know, running is one of the best ways to, to stay healthy. Uh, and, you know, I want them to continue running, whether it's in college or junior college and maybe even beyond that. But to, to be a lifetime runner, we say XC for life, cross country for life. And to get ahead in this world so they know how to compete. This world is all about competition. Learn how to compete. You're going to have to compete to get into college. You're going to have to compete to get that job. So learn how to compete. And that they will persevere in all things in their lives, you know. And that they will learn to accept, not to accept mediocrity, you know, not to be average, to get the best out of them. And I think that's my job as a coach is to, is to get the best out of these kids, not to settle for, to, to be average, not to be an average one, not to be an average person, but to, to excel, you know. And, and I challenge them daily. I challenge them with workouts and the, and the talks that I have. And like I said, I, I want the best out of them. And I tell them I am not going to shortchange you. As your coach, I will not shortchange you. I will teach you everything I know, strategy, motivation, everything needs to come together. And I will not shortchange you. And you have to believe me. You have to believe me and you have to believe in yourself. You know, so these are just some of the uh, lessons that I, that I uh, work with our, with our team. Nahungvita, you probably heard that word. You know, even the gentleman ahead of me was talking about Nahungvita. Nahungvita, strong word for, for Hopis. Uh, it means, you know, like, like, let's dig way deep down in yourself and find that inner strength because, you know, we get tired and you got to learn how to get beyond that. Our, our dancer, the girl you saw dancing, she danced all day, yesterday and today. The guys interchanged, but the girl danced all day, and I'm sure she was tired, you know. I mean, I'm sure she said, Nahungwita to herself, you know, come on, girl, just finish hard, just keep dancing hard. You saw her last night, she was really lifting her knees, you know, and that's what it is, is finding the inner strength, no matter how tired you are. In our dances that we have, 
the, our elders, our elders talk about this. You know, they tell you know, it's get strong. Find that inner strength. Find that strength that you have. Because we stay up all night, Friday night, and then we stay up all day Saturday, all day uh, Sunday, dancing. And by the afternoon, I mean, you are tired. Physically, you are tired. Mentally, you are tired. You know, and that's when you have to pray to yourself. I call it positive self-talk. You know, that power talk. And that's what this Nahongvita means, is you're, is you're looking for that strength. You know, we all get tired. We all sometimes want to, ah, put this away for a while. Our, no, let's get it done. You know, and, uh, and that's, what, that's, that's what we use as, as Hopis, our dances, our ceremonies, our racing. You know, somewhere in the middle of that race, you are going to get tired. And you have to make a decision. You have to make that choice. You know, are you going to back off? Are you going to still run with the same pace? Or are you going to bust through? You know, and this is where that word comes in. Now, hongvita. Strengthen yourself. Find yourself. Deep down. And that's what I want to leave you with. Is, is you know, find your inner strength. You know, find it. Get in there and there, there's more in there. I tell my guys, be glad. Be happy you finished the race. But don't be satisfied. Because there's more in there. Thank you. <laughs> We're done, huh? We're done. Again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who came out for our first Hopi Festival. It was so great to have you here. We're so blessed and privileged to work with this community, and I hope they come back. Thank <laughs> you.